And welcome back to Belmont Bunch, finally, here in the summer. I got sunburnt so bad, I can't lift my arms above my shoulders. Um, I wore an Islanders uh, bench clearer shirt for that. It is not their fault I didn't wear sunscreen. I feel like a moron. Anyway, we're back, uh, and we're talking about some free agency stuff. The Islanders have made some moves um, at the draft. They acquired Alexander Romanov, who's now on our players' list as an RFA. And um, there's still some work to do to get better, but it is completely... I, I think it's an objective fact to say that the Islanders have got gotten better with the, uh, I guess, the caveat that they have to re-sign Romanov to officially have gotten better because anything would be better than Chara from last year. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But So the Islanders... They, get, they make that move. They make their top four better. 22-year-old. Uh, uh, Dobson's also 22. That's going to be a lot of fun to see what each of those guys can do. And I, I, I think uh, it has to be set off the bat. Yes, it was frustrating at first. And I you saw my character arc uh, via Twitter, if you're interested in that. Um, in the, the When the trade was announced and the initial disappointment... Mostly, almost all stemmed from the fact that we, we thought that that was going to be the price or, or that the Islanders were going to acquire JT Miller. So when we hear there's been a trade announced, I am getting hyped for this 99-point player to become an Islander. We're finally addressing the offensive needs. And it ends up being Alexander Romanov. Um, you know, that that was that's unfair to Alexander Romanov. It still feels a little bit steep. But if the Islanders were not sold on anybody at their position in the draft, and it does seem like they got a, a steal uh, in the second round once again, uh, like last year. So maybe maybe Lou is playing four-dimensional chess. But it also might just come down to, I guess we'll start with the defensive market. So that's the defensive market at, at left-handed D that we were looking at prior to acquiring Alexander Romanov. And it's not fantastic, is it? Uh, you know, um, I, I, I think a Letty reunion is a possibility on a team, a very team friendly deal because you've got 11 million in cap space. You've got Dobson and Romanov that are going to eat up probably a decent bit of that. Um, you know, looking for a bridge deal, probably for Romanov, uh, possibly a bridge deal as well for Dobson. It's going to take up money. And, um, a little bit nervous about the fact that the Isles have not shown any, any indication of trading Josh Bailey yet. Um, obviously, we have the Russia scare with Ilya Sorokin um, that, you know, keeps the, the, the lingering doubt of trading Semyon Varlamov. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. I've seen some people theorize, hey, trade Varlamov, bring back Grice as the backup. We do keep Mitch Korn uh, and Pierre Greco, so... This is just like a big roundup so far of everything that's happened since I last made a video. Um, yeah, so there are pieces in the, I mean, the, the goaltending coaching staff is exactly what it was, and that's exciting. Um, and Grice last year, obviously not great, obviously getting older uh, on a one year with great coaching uh, and hopefully a better defense can provide results. We're just looking at ways that we can move, uh, you know, create cap space for one of these moves. So anyway, yeah, uh, of those defenders, uh, I, I really, realistically, only see, like, Letty. I think Sherrod's going to get an actual deal from somebody. A lot of those guys, it's funny to see Gustafsson on that list, who we could have had last year. Wouldn't have been the difference between playoffs and not, but um, would have been more interesting, I think. Uh, but anyway, let's look at forwards. Uh, I know I just laid out the case that basically the Islanders have to move a contract to you know, acquire someone like Johnny Gaudreau, who is nearing the end of his period where he can sign an eight-year deal with the Flames. And that is giving me hope. That's part of the reason I decided to do the video today. Um, you know, because it's going to be useful beyond that. Uh, it's going to be useful for when free agency starts on the 13th. Um, but I don't know. I, I wanted to highlight the Gaudreau thing because he is a New Jersey boy. Um, he's a Jersey boy. And... Uh, the Flyers, I don't think, can fit him in the cap. Um, maybe the Devils, but the Islanders are probably a little bit closer to winning. Um, obviously, last year was rough. 
and no uh, trots anymore is a bit of an issue. But, you know, Johnny Gaudreau, maybe he wants to come for some of that winning culture that is only a year removed uh, for the Islanders. But Kadri, interesting name um, that Friedman, Elliot Friedman, had mentioned connected to the Islanders today. Um, if that were to happen, a lot of speculation that Brock Nelson would have to move back to the wing. Maybe Matt Barzal moves to the wing uh, if Kadri would be the 1C. But, you know, Kadri will be 32 this year. And I'm wary of some of these avalanche guys because, you know, they were playing in a high-flying, explosive offense. When that comes to the Islanders, I would expect um, point drop-offs. Uh, I know it's a, not the Trotz system, but it is a, um, you know, a Trotz assistant. So I can't imagine that's all going to be swept away immediately. So um, that would be interesting. Uh, Bergeron, I listed these guys in order of, I think it was points from last year. Uh, I would be interested. Now, it's funny. Strom, that is both Matthew, or sorry, that is both Dylan and Ryan now are free agents after Dylan was not offered a qualifying offer. But uh, I think the Islanders are looking for something a little bit more established in the forward group. Um, Kopp, I would expect to re-sign with the Rangers for the assets they gave up for him. And he played pretty well. Uh, Phil Kessel, I don't really want any part of that. Um, Valeri Nachushkin was an interesting name. Um, but I, I think the Avs would like to bring him back. I think the Avs are going to lose Kadri, but would want to bring some of the uh, you know, secondary scorers back like Burakovsky, like Nachushkin. It's going to be interesting to see who they choose to bring back and who not to. And, uh, you know, obviously Kemper now uh, looking like he'll be gone. They're not spending a ton on goaltending, so maybe they could spend in other places. Um, Trocek, um, rule number one, must trip him when he shows up to camp. Uh, rule number two, uh, I guess uh, similar to Kadri, move guys to the wing for Trocek. Um, Palat, um, early thirties now, I, I'm, I mean, he's been a playoff performer, um, would be interesting. I, I think really though, I'm looking for goal scorers. I'm really looking for guys that, you know, Matt Barzell, um, you know, he'll occasionally show off a nice shot, but it, it's pretty clear that he is a playmaker first. And, you know, I want to see a Gaudreau with that. I want to see a... It's not a lot else on this list. Maybe Niederreiter. Uh, I feel like that'd be uh, not, uh, you know, that wouldn't break the bank. I don't know if he'd come back to the Islanders, although it's, you know, run completely differently from when he was traded for Cal Clutterbuck. Um, Mason Marchman, I think, is going to end up back with the Panthers. Panthers had a really good year. Um, Stastny, eh, eh, old. Niederreiter already said. Rodriguez, meh. Uh, Malkin, meh. Raquel, eh, there's a lot of eh on here. But, you know, Riley Smith, um, I think Vegas has been playing around with money. Um, I think there was a rumored extension coming coming around for him, so I expect him to be back there. Frank Vitrano, um, you know, would be a nice fit, but I think the Rangers are going to try to retain him because it depends on if the Rangers try to resign Cop and Vitrano or they do away with both of them and they go after, like, Kadri. Um Mikheyev. Mikheyev could work. Uh, Two-way forward. Um, showed pretty well with Toronto last year. Toronto doesn't look like they're going to be able to re-sign him. I, I, would, I guess I would star that as a name. That's possible. Um, no one else, really, of the forward uh, group. So, you know, it's kind of like all in. Or, you know, probably Mikheyev's not... I know he was looking for, what, four or five? I'll probably get four i would think um and that still would require the islanders to kind of play around with the money a little bit maybe they could just squeeze with two bridge deals and a mckayev in there but i think you know the big game hunting thing we heard about lou was going big game hunting a couple years ago i'd like to actually see that i know the panarin thing hurts it hurts a lot i had already created an a, a custom team in nhl with like the guys i thought were gonna be on the islanders that year oh lou's gonna get them all I want to be dead. Anyway, but Goudreau, I look, I just, as Islander fans, we don't get a lot of big ticket guys from free agency. We have to draft them if we do. Um, and God, this Islander team needs that level of talent. A guy that was in the 
uh, you know, the, the scoring race. He was in the um, MVP conversation last year. Uh, I know there's like a, a worry that he can kind of go away in the playoffs a little bit, but I would prefer, yes, to have him in the regular season to get us to the playoffs. Also, we scored the game-winning goal of the first series this year, so maybe that's going away. Um, I'm just not... It's it's not a great free agent class. Um, and for the Islanders, I, I, I think it made sense to last minute go and use that draft capital on Romanov uh, or, you know, a defenseman in general, just because the, I mean, the forward market's not great, but the defensive market's really bad. Um, I, as I saw I had one person tweet today, it was like, oh, this would have been great five years ago, this uh, defensive uh, market. But yes, uh, what I want personally is, yes, get Dobson, get Romanov, get them in on their deals. Um, they're both 22. You give them a bridge. That gives you flexibility to, you know, maybe only have to move one contract and have a shot at Johnny Gaudreau. But things would have to move pretty quickly um, because Johnny Gaudreau is going to be in incredible demand. Uh, especially because, I, I, you know, there are names here, but Bergeron, I'd be shocked if he's if, if he's not a Bruin. I think he'll just leave. He'll just retire. Uh, Giroux, um, I don't I The Islanders, I, Islander fans want somebody in their prime. Uh, I want somebody in their prime. I'm tired of seeing this, uh, even though Green wasn't awful last year. Um, it is nice, you know, the the notion that Lou hates young guys. Um, he's, Dobson and Romanov are going to get a lot of playing time this year. And, uh, you know, they might have to go to Grant Hutton next year. If they're not great this year, the Isles, if they're kind of, you know, just barely getting through the season, uh, they're probably going to trade uh, Scott Mayfield. Um, and they're going to need a, a third pairing right-handed defenseman. But, um, yeah, it, a lot going on. Uh, I, you know, had to go through a little bit of everything just to give context on what's going on. Um, Johnny Gaudreau is, uh, for me, goal number one, goal number two, goal number three in this offseason. I think the most likely outcome is that the Islander current roster is very much what we see come opening night. Uh, maybe with the addition of Nick Letty, I saw it speculated today that Nick Letty, uh, has missed New York, has missed the boys and would come back on a team friendly deal, but he played top four minutes with the blues last year, uh, with the current Islander team. Uh, yeah, I guess he could play top four again. I, I mean, I pretty sure we got Romanoff to play top four, but, um, you know, it would be nice to have some depth on defense. Um, even though <laughs> last we saw Nick Letty, I wasn't a huge fan. Seems like he played pretty well with the Blues. Um, but I'm not really sold on anybody else on that left-handed D market. Uh, Romanov is expected to be a two-way guy. Uh, Dobson's the puck mover. Uh, you know, Pelly defensively is great. Uh, Pollock two-way. Uh, I don't know. if they. I think Lou had talked about maybe adding one more uh, offensive piece. I mean, Yandel's there, but I don't think uh, the Isles and Lou would would mesh with Yandel. Um, so, yeah. I mean, a Nick Letty reunion is a possibility. really depends on what the open market gives to Nick Letty. Um, or if Nick Letty just loves New York that much, which, hey, we love you, Nick Letty. I, I didn't love him as a player by the end because I thought he was getting a little bit slow and not so great defensively. Um, but it wouldn't be the end of the world on a really cheap deal. Kind of like last year when we signed Chara and I was like, great, uh, seventh D man, let's go. And <laughs> Barry Trotz was like, oh no, he's playing top four minutes. Ugh. I guess Lou also said that cause he didn't acquire anyone else. Um, all right. Uh, I didn't really talk any about Bellows. Um, but I can't imagine he's coming back for more than a million. Probably not that they just signed Salo. Uh, and, and seven, six other players. They just signed a lot of guys onto sub million dollar deals and two way deals. Um, Aho came back, which makes me think Green and Chara are gone because Aho got a, a one way, uh, which would make me think he's number seven. And that we're going to have on the left to start the year Pelly, Robinov, Salo, and on the right, Pollock, um, Dobson, Mayfield. 
So I'm pretty happy with that. I, I do think that is immediately better than last year. And, um, you know, even if at, at the beginning there's some growing pains, I'm willing for the Islanders to go through that for a 22-year-old defenseman and for Robin Salo um, to, to get more playing time. They, they have to, you know, develop some of these young guys. And the, the Islanders are in a really tough spot because they're kind of in a win now still because so many core guys are signed fairly long term that they're, they're, you know, it's tough to wait on guys. So maybe that's where Nick Letty comes in and um, maybe Ajo still ends up in the AHL. But um, I don't know. I, like I said, I think the conservative um, guess is that the roster stays almost exactly as is with these two signing and um <laughs> that's it uh you know uh, but lou works in the shadows and maybe the josh bailey thing is just noise and he is going to get moved um so we will see but this is kind of just a, a video to get caught up and let you know what i'm thinking um really really uh Nervous when it feels like there's only one guy that I really, really want. There's not really that fallback guy for me, personally. Um, so, we'll see how it goes. I'll try to do videos uh, more frequently coming up. Uh, I just got a new job that is less time-intensive for, like, outside of 9 to 5 stuff. So, that should hopefully help. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. From Belmont Bunch.